Hey everybody, welcome to The Real United States, and we're back in the kitchen, because you all know I do like to cook, and although I have some reservations occasionally about whether that fits with the theme of the channel, I try to make a good tie-in, and uh, I don't know if that's going to work today or not, because I don't know enough about the history of pot pie. But, what I do want to tell you is that uh, despite the fact that our family name is very clearly of Scottish origin, um, the fact of the matter is, is that the majority of, of my heritage, and of course my wife's heritage, is German. So um, we tend to, uh, to, to eat a lot, a lot of German dishes, uh, and we also like to frequent German restaurants. Um, fairly um, impressive ones here in the state of Michigan, and especially in the center of the state. And one of the things that I've noticed both here and in the East in German restaurants is when you, when you order sausage, you, you frequently get sauerkraut. And often they are cooked together, all right? The, uh, the, the sauerkraut has the sausage just put in there and the whole thing's heated up together. So uh, I got to thinking, you know, if they're going to be cooked together or heated together or whatever, um, why not just seal this thing up with a pastry cover? like you do with a pot pie, and just cook it all in there so it stays nice and moist and all the flavor stays in and, and all that, everything from the meat goes back into the sauerkraut. So anyway, I came up with sausage and sauerkraut pot pie. And I did a quick search for it on the internet. I didn't see where anybody else has done it, so this is where you saw it first, folks. So now, what I'm going to have in this are relatively simple ingredients. I got a couple of small onions, okay? Um, they're just a yellow, little yellow onion. That they're yeah, relatively sweet. Uh, I've already peeled a couple. I'm going to dice those up. I have a pork chop that I'm going to debone, and I'm going to cut in two and, and dice up, And because uh, pork... Um, these, this isn't a smoked pork chop, but pork is often served in German cuisine. Although a true Wiener schnitzel, for example, is veal, you'll often see now that it is a pork cutlet. Um, and then we have Weisswurst. These are or white sausage. These are fairly hard to come by. Um, we drove a little over two hours uh, to a store we know of that carries them in central Michigan, uh, and we bought a couple of pounds of them. Um, you can use any kind of little sausages you like, really. There's, you know, there's nothing engraved in stone. You can even use the little cocktail smokies. I mean, that would be fine. But um, we chose to use this time or vice versa. I've done it with like a, a cheddar brat in the past. You could use a plain brat or a smoked sausage or whatever you like. But I'm doing it with vice versa because, well, I, I want vice versa. And the other ingredient is a large can of sauerkraut. Now, what I've done, um, I have to cert make certain considerations for my palate. And uh, so I can't have it too sour. So what I did... I drained off the liquid out of the can, and then I filled the bag up with water and kind of jiggled it around and rinsed it out. I did that twice to get some of the sourness off of that before I use it, and that's typically how I have to prepare my sauerkraut. Um, depending on your personal taste, you can do that or just take it right out of the can. doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this into a bowl. Uh, and the reason is, is because I have to season this. So, some sauerkraut, a can of sauerkraut, okay. And it doesn't really matter if it's in a can or a jar or a plastic bag or whatever you like. But just some sauerkraut. Now, one of the things, again, that we discovered from going to all these different uh, restaurants in Michigan and in the greater Washington, D.C. area, uh, including a very upscale one in downtown D.C. right near the uh, Union Station, is that they typically uh, use fennel um, to season the sauerkraut. Now, you can use fennel seed, I suppose, or you could even use fennel fronds, a fresh 
but I have access to uh, fennel powder. Um, I'm not sure what part of the fennel it's made from, whether it's the seeds or the fronds, but um, you want to be careful with this unless you really like licorice um, because fennel, like anise or aniseed, like star anise or aniseed, has a very licorice kind of flavor, so you want to go easy on it. So in this big can of sauerkraut, I'm going to add one quarter of a teaspoon ish of fennel powder. And I suppose if you're using fennel seed and you weren't going to grind it up or anything, you might go a little heavier. But yeah, and it's a personal taste thing, so. Um, but that's what I'm doing. I'm going to give it a little stir. Yes, I'm stirring it with a knife. Sorry, folks. <laughs> but, uh, that's all. Just want to get it kind of worked around in there. All right, I'm going to set that aside. That's going to go in the casserole dishes when I get ready. Um, normally, I would just shove this all into the casserole raw, but uh, I was admonished on a recent pot pie that my onion was perhaps not as cooked as would be desirable. So I'm going to sweat my onions just a little bit um, prior to putting them in the casserole so that they uh, are nice and tender for everyone. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm so bad. But uh, anyway, so let me get these diced up and I'll be right back to, to show you the rest. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've diced up my two little onions and I've got a nice little, I don't know, cuff or so of, of diced onion here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sweat those a little bit just to soften them. Um, so I'm going to put, you know, I don't know, a tablespoon-ish of butter in my cast iron pan. I put that on kind of a medium heat. Medium heat. And get that going. Um, maybe I'll even use a spatula to give this a little stir. Gonna get that butter moved around so it melts faster. But again, you're just you're not looking for a real, you know, a sizzle or anything. You just want to get these to start to turn a little translucent, you know, sweat. So, it's not a particularly big deal. It does require some salt. Okay, and that'll start to, to, to hiss here in just a minute. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to debone this pork chop and cut it up into little pieces so it's ready to go in here when all this comes together. I'll be right back. So normally, if I was doing like a just a regular pork pot pie, which I did last night, by the way, I would also make a gravy um, to put down over this because if you've ever had pot pies, like, you know, manufactured pot pies, they've always got you know, gravy on them. But, since I'm doing this with sauerkraut rather than a mixed vegetable, I thought gravy would probably be kind of nasty. So, um, I'm going to do it just as though it was a plain sauerkraut and sausage and, and pork uh, presentation without the, uh, without the crust. And, uh, and, and sands the gravy. So, there we go. We got our pork cut up. And... Uh, as soon as our onions are, are sweated, which they are not yet, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to load this all into the dishes and put the puff pastry on top and fire it in the oven, which is already heat, preheated to uh, 425 degrees. Now, you don't want to check the package when you buy puff pastry, but it's almost always 
425 is what the baking instructions are, and you're going to bake that in about 25 minutes. That's what experience has taught me. Now, yes, I am putting the pork right in the pie, raw. Trust me, 25 minutes at 425 and that bad boy is cooked through, and yet it's still very, very moist and tender. It's just cooked through without being dry, because pork, you know, you can dry out the, the, the lean parts very quickly. This keeps it very nice and moist, so the timing and the temperature are relatively important on this, and uh, of course having the crust kind of, you know, pretty well sealed around the edge. So that we will get to in just a minute. Okay, I had neglected to mention that I'm not going to just shove the whole, the whole sausage in there, that I'm actually going to cut these up fairly small uh, as well. So that, uh, you know, so that it's homogenous relatively throughout the body of the pie. And uh, incidentally, I, this is a top only pie. This is not, I'm not putting a crust underneath or on the sides. Um, I, I have found that that's too much crust and too much work. This is perfectly acceptable. We like it this way. If you wanted a, a full crust, you certainly could. Um, but we are doing a top only crust. Interestingly enough, that's a technique I learned at an Irish restaurant or pub in Washington, D.C., where they did a beautiful chicken pot pie, and it was a top only crust with the puff pastry instead of a regular pie crust, and I fell in love with it, so there we go. My onions are sautéing, or rather, sweating. They're almost sautéing. <laughs> I want to crank those down just a hair. Because I'm not necessarily looking to caramelize them. I'm looking just to, uh, you know, just to make them a little translucent, a little soft. And, uh, there, there we go. That's it. I'm going to wait for those, and we'll be right back. Okay, my onions have sweat and uh, are getting, you know, nice. They're getting just a little bit of color on them, but it's okay. And uh, so I'm ready to put this whole thing together. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a chef. I just like to cook. So <laughs> I'm going to get some of my nice sauerkraut with fennel in it down here and you can really smell that fennel now that it's had time to sit in there and uh, get all worked up with the sauerkraut. It's really really nice. Now you can never ever have too much seasoning by the way folks so just so you know um, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to toss in some of the vice first now. So I got a couple of those. I'm probably, I probably put too much. I probably cut too much. I probably should only put one vice, vice first. Um, but hey, what the heck. And then, uh, some of the pork. Try to divvy it up. Keep it equal. <laughs> Especially since my dining companion's right on the other side of the camera watching me, so I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm so bad to her. Hmm. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then, my sweated onions. Okay, how nice and pretty. Just a little bit of color to them. I'm going to put those around on top. And the reason is on top is because there's still going to be some moisture that comes out of these, even though I've, you know, worked some of the moisture out with the heat and the salt. 
there's going to be some, some oniony goodness come out as you apply the heat to the oven. And what I want to do is I want that to run down through the meat and add all that good flavor to the meal. And in case you hadn't noticed, for Bev and I, all meals are based on onion and garlic. So, um, I actually have some onion powder to boot. A little bit of that ain't going to hurt a thing. And a little bit of garlic powder. As you dive into this from the top down with your spoon or fork or everything, it kind of pulls everything down and mixes it together. So I don't worry too much about it being layered rather than mixed. But, you know, that's me. Okay, so now the only other thing is I have a package of puff pastry here. Actually, it's a partial package because, as I said, I made a beef or pork pot pie with a pork gravy and mixed vegetables last night. Turned out very nicely. But I had enough uh, pastry to make, well, more pot pies. I thought, well, this would be a good way to, to use it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just cut a piece and eyeball it. That is the size of the bowl, roughly. Okay. Just peel it off of the paper that it comes on. And just give it enough of a stretch, you know, just to, to cover up the whole top. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit bigger. <laughs> Just kind of seal it around the edge, you know, right to the edge of the bowl. Just pull it and tuck it, scrimp it right onto the glass, ceramic, whatever this is, a glass. Kind of bring these corners in a little bit so you don't have that big piece of dough hanging out. I'm sticking these into a sheet pan as a safety precaution. Just in case, it's a force of habit. I, these are not going to boil over, but uh, you know, the ones with the gravy, um, I'm used to putting them into a sheet pan like this so that if anything bubbles over, it's easier to clean that pan than it is the entire bottom of the oven. <laughs> so. If somebody wants to, uh, you know, tell me down in the comments what the origin of pot pie is, uh, I doubt very much that it is the United States. I'm, I'm thinking that pot pie is probably something that came out of, oh, I don't know, either uh, either Europe or possibly the Far East um, in Asia. So, anyway, they're not beautiful, but they'll keep you alive. All right, I got my oven already preheated to 425 degrees. And I'm just going to fire these in there and set the timer. There we go. For 25 minutes. And then we're going to pull them out. And then they need to cool for a while. 25 right there. And uh, we'll show you how they turned out in just a minute, folks. Okay, our alarm just went off. I just shut it off. 
And uh, we're gonna pull these out and hopefully they're not burned. Always give it a second for the heat to come out. Don't leave it with your face. It's very unpleasant. And they look pretty beautiful. Get them out of here so that you can see them a little bit better. Got these nice little silicone hot pads. Trivets, whatever you want to call them. And there you go, folks. Sausage, pork, and sauerkraut pot pies. You know what? you know, half an hour or so, um, 25 minutes of cooking time. Yeah, you got, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of prep time. It's not terribly complicated. You cut stuff up, put it together, and put it in the oven. By the time you get ready to put it in there, the oven should be preheated, and away you go. Um, but the important takeaway here is is that, uh, and uh, Beverly was astute enough to, to make this observation, that uh, what I was really doing here was showing that you don't have to, you know, live with the rigidity that we're all taught that pot pie is either beef or chicken or pork and that's it. No. Um, anything that you would cook, you know, together with some vegetables. Um, and, and clearly it doesn't matter whether that's, you know, a raw vegetable or, a, you know, in this case, a fermented vegetable. Or what? You know, you, if you've got a protein and you've got a vegetable and you put them in a vessel and you seal it up with some dough, and that can either be puff pastry like this, which I happen to like very much, or you can use a regular pie crust, which, you know, you can whiff up in about 10 minutes and uh, season it and shove it in there. And, and that's, that's pot pie in its essence. So you could be a seafood pot pie or it could be a, you know, a, a sausage pot pie, I, you know, I mean, you could make it with just about any protein. I wouldn't try it with eggs. That might be a whole different critter, but I mean, <laughs> you know, you could use veal or you could use lamb or you could use goat, I suppose, you know, if you wanted to do like a um, sort of a curry goat, like what you might find in, in Jamaica or in, you know, elsewhere in the Caribbean or in um, in Indian cuisine where you have, you know, goat with curry and whatever vegetables and you mix it together in your vessel and put on the crust and bake it. It's going to be the same drill. And in fact, now that I said that, I may have to try that one of these days. But anyway, these are going to take about half an hour to an hour to cool. And uh, so... You know, they're not going to look a lot different than the, what they look like when you saw it go in. Because there isn't really any browning that goes on. It's, you know, the, the pork turns kind of white because, it, you know, it cooks. But other than that, it's going to look very much like it did. And uh, so, unfortunately, folks, you're not going to get to see us test these. But I assure you, they're going to be just delish. So, anyway, you got questions, you got comments, leave them in the comments section down below. I love hearing from all of you. And I will do the best I can to answer them. If you're new here, well, we don't always do cooking, but we do do it with some regularity. Well, there's lots of other things that we do here that we hope you'll enjoy. And we'd like to you consider picking subscribe to come along for the adventure because we've got lots more to show you. And as always, folks, well, thank you for watching. <music>